Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about: Do you really need a sourcing agent in China, or can you do it yourself? If you are new to sourcing from China, your first decision will be: Should I manage this by myself? You may need to be able to commit between one and three hours per day on supplier sourcing and management, and that's just for each supplier. This time will be made up of the time you spend in identifying new suppliers that can make your products at the right price and quality levels. The time in helping develop new products or styles with the suppliers, and the time in ongoing management of the supplier relationships, such as communication, quality control, shipments follow up, crisis if any. If this isn't going to be possible for your team, then you need to consider bringing in a third-party sourcing agent to help you in China. Actually, you can have four different options here, and here is a diagram that outlines your options. Now let's look at each in more detail to see which best suits your situation. The first option is purchase direct. This is what 80% of importers try to do. They want to control the whole process and avoid paying commissions to any middleman or agent. If you are organized enough to manage suppliers, and if you can satisfy the minimum order quantities of suppliers, this is probably the best option for you. The second option is to use a commissioned sourcing agent. Thousands of individuals in China are trying to make a living by providing this service. If they are from the right industry, you can use their network and save a lot of time. They can also act as your in-country representative. Unfortunately, over 90% of them get a hidden commission from the factory. This is normal business in China, and as a result, when things go wrong. They often tend to defend the factory rather than you. The third option is to purchase from a trading company. This is a good option if you cannot satisfy the MOQs. Perhaps if you are a startup or entrepreneur placing an early order, a trading company can place production in a smaller workshop that accepts small orders. Aside from this particular situation, I don't advise to work with a middleman. The fourth option is to use a service company. Some China sourcing agents provide a service and charge a fee. Everything is transparent, such as suppliers' names, the process followed, etc. It will be an investment for your company before production starts. But it is a good option if you forecast large orders down the road. Such agents used to be very rare, but I'm sure it will become more and more common in the future. The best ones tend to work as a procurement office and to be well organized. Okay, next, why should you use a sourcing agent? The trading companies and some other third parties, like sourcing agents, will often provide some or all of the following benefits. The first one is matchmaking, either via a trusted network for insiders only, or through a more scientific approval process comprising of supplier pre-qualification, background checks, and factory audits. The second one is. Management of new product developments. Many foreign buyers don't know how to communicate clearly with Chinese manufacturers. Exchanging messages through a young translator, sending and resending samples—it is just frustrating and time-consuming. Some trading companies and sourcing agents are very good at making this process more efficient. Next one. Is completing product specs. Most importers don't bother to define all their expectations. 
Some has to decide what packaging materials to source in 90% of the cases. Relying on the factory is very risky, and a better solution is to pay a QC form to define it clearly once and for all. Next one is quality control. By third-party inspection agencies or in-house staff, the use of statistical tools that are also used by retailers in the importing country reduces the risk of rejection of a batch that was accepted back in China. Okay, next, reducing payment risks. Buyers need to use tools such as letters of credit or OEM agreements, especially when a relationship is starting and there is no trust. And next, getting out of trouble. This is probably the most underrelated function of a good intermediary. When problems arise, and they will, an importer who isn't in China cannot just solve them by emails and phone calls. Okay, after this, now we're gonna talk about how to find the best sourcing agent for your business. To help you find the ideal sourcing agent, we comply this helpful checklist. The first step is to define what you need. Specifically, the first step is to become aware of what you need and what requirements you have for your sourcing agent and supplier. It's helpful to write a document describing what is important to you. With your sourcing agent, this includes the scope of service, language skills, location, level of experience, payment model, etc. Your requirements to the manufacturer should also be clearly defined. Which work conditions should prevail? Which material type and quality should be used? And how long should the delivery times be? Etc. Once you know all this, you can continue with step two, which is set your budget. How many units do you want to produce? How much can you spend on your products and how much can you pay your sourcing agent? It is best not to set a 100% fixed budget, but a range as unexpected costs can always occur. The third step is to choose a type of sourcing company. As we have seen before, there are different types of sourcing companies. Each type has its own advantages and disadvantages. Decide for yourself whether you prefer to work with a single agent, a larger sourcing company, or a full-service sourcing and logistics company. Step 4. Research and compare. Now that you know what you need and what kind of sourcing agent you want to work with, you can start your research. But don't just Google and use the first result that pops up. Rather use platforms where you can read different independent reviews from other sellers. Then pre-select three to four sourcing agents that meet the criteria you defined in the first step. Next, step five, get different offers and ask for business licenses. Now get offers from the sourcing agents you already included in your pre-selection. The offer should include the price for each service you want to use, and the pricing structure, and how the price is calculated. Something important here. Remember to get a copy of all the business license together with the offers. Then choose the one that fits your requirements and budget cost. The sixth step is negotiate payments. Now that you have chosen a sourcing agent, you still have to negotiate payment with him. While larger companies usually have a fixed price structure, you can often negotiate a better price with agents who work independently. Also, clarify whether the price for sourcing service will decrease over time when you reorder. Next step is to write down everything that was agreed on. In this last step, you should write down everything that was agreed upon. Then both parties, for example, you and the sourcing company, should agree, for example, it must be clear who is responsible in the event 
of per production quality or if the delivery is delayed. The type of payment and the amount should also be written down and confirmed by both parties. This way, you will have a document on which you can rely in case anything goes wrong. Okay, after this, the next big question is how to qualify a sourcing agent. I suggest that you can ask any prospective sourcing agent the following questions before hiring them. How will they get paid and by whom? Will you be able to visit the factories before or during lunch? Can they provide referrals or testimonials from satisfied customers who are using his service and who buy the same type of product as you? Make sure to contact two of them and get confirmations. Do they do quality inspections by themselves? Or do they resort to a specialized third party? Will you get a report every time? Will you get an update every week on the production status? Can they share their management system with you? You need to make sure they have processes in place. The vast majority of agents don't follow any established procedures. Next, what guarantee do they offer in case a supplier scams you? If shipments are behind schedule, and if you receive junk product in your warehouse, are they located in the area where your products will be sourced? If you keep reordering the same products from the same sources, will you pay less for his service after the first order? Okay, next question you must want to know is how much does a sourcing agent cost? Sourcing agents often work on a commission basis. It's not possible to give an exact percentage figure here because it depends on the order quantity, order frequency, and order volume. But usually, the commission percentage is between 2 and 10%, often around 6%. The smaller your order, the higher will be the commission fee. Another common structure is that the commission for the first order will be high and for repeating orders lower. A note here, you can negotiate the commission fee with your sourcing agents until you are satisfied with the price or until you get a satisfied price. And here is a picture for your reference. If you're still determined to do your own sourcing and want to purchase direct, here are some tips for you. The first tip is to come with the right expectations. There will be lots of hidden costs. Don't focus only on the supplier's FOB price. You should know how to calculate your landed cost. For example, the fully burdened cost of your goods after shipment, duties, etc. Also, never trust what untested suppliers tell you. Don't be afraid to check the reality from time to time. It's not personal. It's what my boss asked me to do and keep thinking about those questions. Don't tell them openly that you don't trust them. The second tip is to spend the time to find the right suppliers. This is the single most critical success factor. The right supplier already produces for an export market that is similar to yours in terms of quality requirements. The right supplier is also not too small and not too big. They are properly organized for their size, and the top managers are excited to start working with you. If you want to see many suppliers at once and ask them a bunch of questions, you can come to the trade shows. Okay, next, the third tip is to start small with a new supplier. Remember, do not give a large deposit to an untested supplier and don't expect their products to be shipped on time. A good practice is to open a letter of credit for the first order and to add three weeks of safety padding to the promised schedule. If an order is not managed well, change the supplier now. If you are satisfied, increase order size slowly and regularly. And the fourth tip is the good quality management is essential. You will need a quality department for defining specifications, approving development and production samples, 
and taking decisions after product inspections. You need at least one person who knows the products you are buying, technically speaking, and your market's expectations, like what you can deliver and what won't be accepted. The last tip here, don't jump right away in China. Start placing one order, then another one, and so on, until you feel confidence you have nailed it. You just can't think of everything before you take the first step. I remember one of my clients was forced to rebuild and deliver a carrier in their warehouse because the 40 feet containers just couldn't be unloaded conveniently. Okay, at the end, we want to say that although importers can handle sourcing from China by themselves, but just be aware of the size of the task. Anyone telling you that it's easy or requires little effort is just plain wrong. If you have ready to do it alone, you will most likely be wanting to purchase directly from the factory. In that case, don't forget to spend time sourcing the right supplier, start small and ramp up, and focus on getting quality right from the beginning. I'm not sure whether you can handle all of this in China from abroad, but you should consider going with a sourcing agent if that's the case. Refer to an earlier section about qualify a good agent. Alright, that's all we have for today. We will see you in our next video.